Hello everybody, welcome to Doom Buggy Warehouse's oil leak series. Today we're going to check a used engine case out and give you some pointers on what to look for to make sure it's rebuildable. Uh, we'll also go through a little more high tech, but we'll try to cover the regular stuff so uh, anybody can look before, you know, if you got to ship us a case, sometimes it'll save you some money uh, on shipping if you see the problem right off. First, we're just going to do a visual overlook, make sure that the case isn't terribly uh, corroded. One problem that we do notice is around this oil sump. You want to make sure, even though this one's missing a stud, the threads are in great shape, there's no cracks, it's not decomposed any at all. So if there's ever been water in the engine and uh, it's sat for very long, the water goes to the bottom and absolutely annihilates the magnesium. This particular block is an AE case. So it's a late model VW, dual oil relief, which you can see right here. Uh, a great candidate to make a powerhouse engine. Looks like this has just been stock. Uh, does not look like it's ever had a, uh, like an exhaust valve failure, piston failure, anything like that. The, the bores, the inside of the engine looks pretty good. We're gonna cut it to 94 bore to make it a 1915 which we know it's going to have to have case savers put in. Case saver is a small factory insert. You actually drill and tap the case. It gets inserted, loctited in. The new head stud goes in it. Absolutely eliminates stripped or pulled head studs. So if we see one of these stripped, we're really not worried about that. It. It's going to be fixed anyway. We like to also look at engine mount bolts, just to make sure a lot of times these maybe broke off and they can be a pain in the butt to fix. In inspecting the line bore, you can actually see the VW insignia and the elephant that they used for that Klopensmith bearing back in the day. You can also see the part number. So anytime you see any of this, it's a bad sign, let alone feel it. If you ran your finger over this, it will feel raised as the bearing was stamped so the magnesium is actually pushed up and you can also where the oil galley is on the bearing and it does not touch the case. That is the original size too. So you can feel this step. Anytime you feel a step, it absolutely needs a line board. Without a line bore in it, you should expect extremely short engine life, low oil pressure, and even low horsepower. To reference the line bore of an engine, these are the bores in the case that holds the bearing, that holds the crankshaft. And what needs to happen, all of these needs to be in alignment exactly. The holes need to be round. And with that, we'll have a great running, long lasting engine. On the number three cylinder, the place to look is right here where the cylinder spigot is machined in. This case has a lot of factory magnesium pushed in here. A lot of times they don't, especially on the early cases. And right here is where you will see a crack. Again, this case is in great shape. Around the top stud of number one, sometimes you'll see a crack that'll go right here between these. Uh, I always check around our oil sending unit hole. Number one, make sure the threads look nice and crisp. Number two, make sure there's no cracks here. If somebody over, over tightens this, it will crack it. No evidence of you know anything popping up on top. Make giving us a oil leak we can't fix. Again, behind number three, looks nice and solid. And, and, and if the case is not clean, these are gonna be very difficult things to see. And looking up near the front of the engine, there's three plugs right up here. We wanna make sure that none of these have moved, that there's any cracks around, uh, or that we ever have seen any oil, uh, evidence of oil leaks out of uh, either one of these. If you do drill and tap your case, this is the plug you remove, drill it and tap it for the 3 8 pipe tab. Clearance this boss slightly. We are on the 3-4 side of the case now. This is cylinder number 4 and the stud holes going out. Uh, there is an oil galley that goes right below, right behind these gussets. I have seen it before, not so common, but this can crack from the hole to the oil galley and always just want to pay attention right here. You know, you can see cracks going long ways. Typically, they're from this hole going through the galley. That is a weaker spot in the case. One of the things we're going to look at too is the thrust, which is this surface 
that holds the uh, thrust of the main bearing. On this particular engine, visually, it looks really good. We'll measure that also in a minute just to make sure, but it does look good. Sometimes the cracks are easier to see from the inside. And again, the case being cleaned gives us a very, very good, very easy way to check it. A common area for a high abuse crack on a VW case is right here. This center main of the case can have a crack in it. Again, this case has no cracks, so we're good there. So to check the lifter bore, we love to just have a good lifter around. Everything is clean with no oil. If there's oil on it, a lot of times the gap will um, feel smaller. The oil fills up that space. So this case is extremely clean. We like pulling the lifter out about a half of an inch and feeling. By no means you want it tight, but you do not want any excess play at all. So about halfway out, we're probably feeling five thousandths of uh, of play back and forth that's really good if you pull it way out then you're going to have play uh, but again the lifter never ever comes out there so we like giving a, a check to every hole i've seen one hole war and the others not so you cannot just check one hole you got to check them all we have finished our inspection on the case i have cleaned the case halves with just a solvent uh, we do like to take a file make sure there's no high spots Again, this is a magnesium case, which is a very soft material. For you that have been more accustomed to working on steel cases, do not take a Scotch-Brite pad on a power uh, grinder or on a power die grinder, rotary, whatever, and do anything. It will take the magnesium down, and that will lose the ability to seal for the oil leak. So, very gentle. Take just a solvent with a rag, if you have to take a fine file and give it just a little love, that is good, but be very gentle on it. We had talked about the thrust, and that is the surface where the main bearing grabs the case and controls the in and out from when you're press pushing your pressure plate or clutch in, or uh, the cam gears, if you have helical cam gears, that also gives the engine some thrust movement. Normal on a VW engine case, this is well worn. On this one, we will measure it, but it feels really good. Normally, if you feel anything with your fingernail, that's a bad sign. So we are showing 864 and a half. That is exactly what it needs to be. 0.864 and a half. That is a great thrust. Do not measure the dull part because that is not where the bearing sits. So when you measure, you got to measure the shiny part only. And that is what you want to see at 864. We have preset our micrometer to the factory VW case specification, which is 2 inch, 0.559. And in the middle of their tolerance is a half of a thousand. So I have this set at 2.559 five five nine and a half so we have our bore gauge and as you see i have it set so exactly in the middle of vw's tolerance i have it exactly on zero so we're going to check the case and see how far we're out okay so we covered how to inspect the line bore without any gauges by visually and feeling it now we got our bore gauge set up and we're going to measure it the correct way so there's absolutely no question we know the center bearing was war for sure but see how bad this rear bearing is it did not look very bad so we're going to take care to miss the oil uh, main oil hole and the dowel pin hole in this case so with that as we move around you can see we're about a thousandths under i'm sorry a thousandths oversize as we rotate around we're still about a thousandths. We're gonna go to the other side of that bearing. And again, we're right at a thousandths out. So a thousandths isn't terrible, but it's still out of the VWF factory spec. Let's see what this middle one shows. I bet it's gonna be pretty bad. It's a little harder to measure since it's inside the middle of the case. So this particular way, we're still showing about a thousandths and a half. Let's uh, rotate it around and 
go around here and I'm in the middle where the oil galley is so let's see where we are like right there we're showing still about a thousandths and a half let's rotate on so we see a little bit deeper so we're at about the 10 o'clock position and we're showing two and a half thousandths of wear as this wears it's not just opening this circumference consistently the the power of the rod pushing typically gives us wear points uh, in this bearing that actually makes this hole nowhere near round as as evidence on this center bearing we went from about a thousandth out around to four and a half out around uh, which is well out of tolerance and again an easy line bore will fix it right up. In the what makes a block unusable category is a condition we call gaposis. As you can see, this feeler gauge easily slides in between the center main saddles. The case is properly torqued. That is a result of abuse, neglect, overuse, and makes this block totally unusable. Another condition that we VW engine builders hate to see is a block that comes in where somebody has sandblasted or glass beaded the block. It makes everything look really good, but it is virtually impossible to get it out of the oil galleys. We say absolutely no sandblasting when it comes time to clean up. Common deal breakers for reusing a case is excess corrosion like we see machine work that is out of tolerance or oversize maybe it's already been a line board several times and any crack on the block is absolutely a deal breaker all those conditions render it useless and sent to the junk pile